the oral cancers, there are four important things that we need to understand. The first is the risk factors. The second is the pre-malignant lesions. The third is the staging and the fourth is the management. So let us start with them. And before I move into the depth of the chapter, let us understand some most commons also because most commons, generally they are not asked at your level. In the UG, you can say for the UG students who are preparing for the need PG, basically it is important for them. So let us try to uh, just understand this for the knowledge purpose. The most common type of oral carcinoma. So the most common type overall when we talk about the oral cancers, it is the SCC, squamous cell cancer. We also have other, other types of cancers, but SCC is the most common type. It may be the human papilloma virus positive or human papilloma virus negative and that is why sometimes you have uh, HPHCC and sometimes you have HNHCC. So that is human papilloma virus positive or human papilloma virus negative. Then if we talk about the most common, the most common site in the oral cavity. So when we talk about the most common site in the oral cavity, what is the answer students? It is the tongue. So tongue is the most common site, this is the tongue is to be taken overall, the most common site overall that is tongue and what part in the tongue is important? It is the lateral two third. So the lateral two third of the tongue is very 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 commonly involved. So it is the lateral two third of the tongue. Then we will talk about the overall and all most common site in India. So when you talk about the India or the developing countries, they have an addiction of tobacco chewing. And that is why in India, we eat Kamla Pasan or Vimal, Zuma Kesri. So all these things, they actually affect the, you can say, the buccal cavity or gingivo alveolar sulcus or whatever you say. So buccal cavity is the most important thing here or cheek. So cheek or you can say the buccal cavity. What else is important? Let us understand. The other cancers also, they are very, 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 very important, very important. Now, when we talk about the hard palate and when we talk about the Kaposi's, what is the relation? So, oral Kaposi sarcoma, what is the most common site, the most common site for oral Kaposi sarcoma? What is the answer for that? So, oral Kaposi, yes, it is seen and hard palate is the most common site for it. So hard palate is the most common site for this. However, if the question is twisted vice versa, the most common cancer or the most common malignancy of the hard palate on the other side, it is not the Kaposi sarcoma, it is again the SCC. So all these things are small, small, small things. Now when we talk about the prognosis, so there are two important things, the prognostic indicators and the prognosis based on the histology. So let us understand that also. So when we talk about, so I'm discussing the miscellaneous so that once we start the chapter, we can just easily cruise through this. So when we talk about the prognosis, now it is again very, 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 very important. So the most important prognostic factor. So what is the most important prognostic factor that we have? Answer is depth of invasion. So depth of invasion, this is what is the most common, the another most common important or the most one of the most important is the lymphovascular invasion, lymphovascular invasion. So lymphovascular invasions and depth of invasion, they are very, very, very important because higher the depth, higher is the incidence of lymphovascular invasion. So if both are given, what should be your answer? Yes, this is overall the most important. So lymphovascular invasion, that is the lymph node status or the status of the metastasis. That is what is really very, 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 very important. Now, there are alternate prognostic factors also. Based upon that, when we talk about the tumor with best prognosis and the tumor with worst prognosis. Best prognosis, when we talk about, answer is CA heart palate. When we talk about the worst prognosis, do you know that the you can say the country like India is the oral cancer capital of the world. So yes, it is also associated with worst prognosis that is the buccal cancers. So the buccal cancers or the buccal cavity cancers, they are the one which are associated with what worst prognosis. Now let us try to understand what are the risk factors that are involved in oral cancers. Then we shall see what are the pre-malignant lesions also. 
So when we talk about the risk factors, what are the classical risk factors that we have for oral cancers? Students smoking, we have alcohol. So smoking or any form of tobacco, this is again very 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 important. So I should be saying tobacco. So smoking or tobacco, then alcohol. Do you know tobacco is associated with eight four to eight times? This is what is important. So four to eight times increase risk of oral cancers. But do you know in presence of alcohol? So alcohol individually is associated with two. You can say maximum two times increase risk. But do you know tobacco? plus alcohol together this is going to increase this risk as high up to what students 32 32 times and this is again very 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 important so we have smoking we have alcohol what else then we have the betel nut so betel nut or supadi yeah so betel nut is again important what else what else you can say chronic submucosal fibrosis students chronic submucosal fibrosis is one very important entity which is not only considered as a risk this is also considered as a pre-malignant entity i'll tell you about that then what about the others we have the classical things like ill-fitting dentures ill-fitting dentures now why this ill-fitting dentures answer is they're all going to lead to what they lead to the chronic submucosal fibrosis because of the repeated trauma then what else students hpv human papilloma virus so human papilloma virus 16 18 etc etc there are other strains also they're going to cause this what else or who else is important apart from this you can have is have as lichen planus so lichen planus lichen planus is again a you can say a risk factor then chronic candidiasis chronic and not only this lichen planus is important, it is chronic lichen planus. So it should be chronic lichen planus. Then again, syphilis, syphilis. And do you know syphilitic chancre can be seen? Then we have chronic candidiasis, chronic candidiasis, candidiasis. So these are some risk factors that we have for the oral cancer. Now students, let us talk about the presentation. Let us talk about the, you can say, the the eval the evaluation and then we'll talk about the staging etc so when we talk about the presentation the classical presentation that we have so presentation we have ulcero we have ulcero proliferative mass it may be ulcero proliferative or 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 students it may be ulcero ulcero necrotic ulcero necrotic lesion so ulcero proliferative or ulcero necrotic lesion or 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 students along with that there will be palpable lymphadenopathy so palpable lymph nodes so palpable cervical lymph nodes usually level 1 level 2 level 3 level 1 level 2 level 3 are seen but one very important thing is like we saw this in the this phenomena in thyroids so do you know superior pole tumor have a tendency to go into the lateral part of the neck and usually if you want a thyroid lesion to to go to the lateral part of the neck first they should go to the central and from central they should be going to the lateral this is the normal routine metastatic you can say route that is the lymphatic route but in case of superior pole tumors they might go directly by invading the thyroid capsule into the lateral part of the neck and what kind of metastasis this will be known as this will be known as a skip metastasis so try to understand this skip metastasis why it is known as skip metastasis because it has skipped the normal route of metastasis so this phenomenon of skip metastasis is also 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 seen in case of the cervical lymph nodes with uh, uh, it is seen in cervical lymph nodes with ca tongue so do you know the tongue cancer so cancer of the tongue so cancers of the tongue they have a tendency to show a direct invasion a direct invasion into the level 4 lymph nodes into level 4 lymph nodes and thereby skipping the usual routine route of spread and therefore they that is what is known as skip meds so it is not surprising in a patient of ca tongue that level 1 level 2 level 3 may be normal and level 4 is showing you what skip metastasis and this is again very 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 simple so also proliferative also necrotic nodes uh, uh, ulceronecrotic lesions, palpable cervical lymphadenopathy, 
then along with that you may have features of local invasion so when we talk about features of local invasion what are the features of local invasion it remember it may be invading so there may be trismus there may be trismus what is trismus it is lock jaw there may be ankyloglossia what is ankyloglossia the bone like stiffened or bamboo like stiffened tongue what else there may be involvement of the you can say sympathetic trunk also in the later stages resulting in that horner syndrome like condition so along with that there will be involvement involvement into the muscles of mastication so muscles of mastications might be involved again this might create a problem so all these things are very 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 common so trismus ankyloglossia then students the features of there may be the features of what distant spread also so distant spread also can be seen so distant mets distant mets when we talk about the distant mets the lungs the bones the brain the liver all these things can be involved let us now understand how we do the diagnosis how we confirm the diagnosis and uh, how we do the staging and how we go for the management because each and everything is really very 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 important very important so when we talk about the concept of diagnosis remember the investigation of choice what is the answer answer is biopsy so since every day i want to meet you and discuss something with you that is why i have this i have kept this trend of the evening live lectures where i will be discussing a lot of simple basic things with you so biopsy and you can go for a punch biopsy you can go for a wedge biopsy you can go for an incision biopsy you can go for what students you can go for an excision biopsy also so all these things may be permitted now when we talk about this is for diagnosis this is for the diagnosis now once we have the diagnosis we need the staging also so investigation of choice for the purpose of staging now when we talk about staging what is the standard investigation for staging answer is pet scan so pet ct pet ct is a very 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 important investigation and if pet ct is not available the next best investigation is not ct scan it is the mri this is again very 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 simple very simple now when we talk about the staging what is the important thing that we need to understand so we are following the ajcc 8th version of the staging and when we talk about ajcc 8th version of the staging what is the change from the 7 to 8 in 7th the depth was the depth of invasion was not incorporated into the staging here it is involved and again extra nodded extension part is also no, was not there now it is there so when we talk about the staging system t1 is defined as less than equal to what 2 cm this is important and depth of invasion less than equal to what 5 mm when we talk about t2 it is more than 2 up to 4 cm or 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 depth of invasion more than 5 up to what mm students up to 10 mm then we have t3 which is more than 4 cm or 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 students the depth of invasion more than what students 10 mm and when we talk about t4 t4 is further divided into local invasion now when we talk about the local invasion again it is of two types resectable or non resectable so if we talk about t4a t4a what is that students it is into the skin it is into the mandible so into the skin into the mandible so skin mandible there is some problem with the marker i don't know what is the problem today that is happening so what are the things we have skin mandible or you can say the floor of the mouth so all these things are included in this but when we talk about the t4b what is t4b students it is into the muscles of mastication into muscles of mastications thus making it what irresectable virtually so this is what is all about t1 t2 t3 t4 when we talk about n n is also very 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 important so when we talk about the n staging we have n1 what is the concept of n1 n1 is defined as 
do you know in head and neck this is also for the thyroids also so the lymph nodes on this is the same thing that we see in the you can say parotid salivary glands so the size of the lymph node in head and neck is very 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 important and if we have a tumor of uh, if we have a tumor the depth of invasion we have seen but for the lymph nodes the size more than 3 less than 6 more than 6 are all very important landmarks so n1 is defined as solitary lymph node solitary lymph node less than equal to what centimeters 3 centimeters when we talk about n2 it is further defined into n2a n2b and n2c so what is n2a what is n2b and what is n2c this is very 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 simple n2a is more than uh, sorry n2a is solitary lymph node solitary lymph node more than 3 cm but maximum could be up to 6 cm n2b is multiple lymph nodes but none of them up what more than 6 cm what is n2c n2c means bilateral lymph nodes but none of them should be more than what students 6 cm so n1 n2 and then we have n3 what is n3 students this is any lymph node any lymph node more than 6 cm maybe unilateral maybe bilateral then comes the concept of ene what is ene students extra nodal extension the tumor has gone beyond the node so extra nodal extension this is again very 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 important so if it is present with the size extra nodal extension plus plus with less than 3 cm le less than 3 cm so that is what is n2 extra nodal in you can say invasion for more than 3 cm that is what is considered as n3 very 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 simple things now before we go to the management let us talk about the pre malignant lesions also and what are the classical pre malignant lesions and then we shall simultaneously discuss their management also so management of the pre malignant lesions so before that let us open up what are the pre malignant lesions so when we talk about the pre malignant lesion the standard pre malignant lesions are oro uh, leukoplakia then we have uh, erythroplakia so let us understand something about them so when we talk about the concept of leukoplakia leukoplakia what are the important things that we need to understand in leukoplakia leukoplakia as the word says is nothing but the white patch and this is what is very 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 important white patch and when you are talking about the white patch what are the important things associated with this so on histology on histology what do you get to see in this so when we talk about the white patch on histology we get to see para keratosis we get to see para keratosis and this is what is very 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 important so para keratosis means the you can say pleomorphism of the cells basically with some atp what are the types of leukoplakia do you know this is the most common oral you can say pre malignant lesions so most common oral pre malignant lesion this is what is leukoplakia we have three classical sub types of leukoplakia what are the sub types of leukoplakia we have a nodular type this is the most common so we have nodular this is the most common then we have the diffuse type diffuse type and then we also have the speckle type of leukoplakia what is a speckle leukoplakia the leukoplakia is located in multiple small small patches which is referred as speckle leukoplakia so very simple thing very 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 simple thing and when we talk about the speckle leukoplakia what are the important things about speckle leukoplakia this is considered to be the most pre malignant most pre malignant leukoplakia remember when we talk about leukoplakia now let us understand erythroplakia who is more powerful or who is more dangerous basically so if you know what is erythroplakia you will never ever raise this dispute so what is that try to understand once it is pleomorphism the next stage will be dyskeratosis or parakeratosis will convert into the dysplasia or that is dyskeratosis so erythroplakia when we talk about what is erythroplakia this is nothing but this is dyskeratosis this is associated with dyskeratosis 
of the oral mucosa and this is what is really very 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 important. So, when we talk about the disc keratosis of the oral you can say epithelium oral cavity epithelium what do you get to see you get to see red velvety patches. So, red velvet velvety patch over the oral mucosa oral mucosa this is what is erythroplakia. Do you know this is 30 times this is 30 times more pre malignant and that is why it should be a matter of what students concern. Then let us talk about something about I, I, I just already told about the chronic submucosal fibrosis. Let us understand something about this. So, when we talk about the chronic the chronic submucosal fibrosis what are the important things that we need to understand in chronic submucosal fibrosis. It is very 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 important let us understand that. Chronic submucosal fibrosis is exposure try to understand what is the concept exposure to chronic irritants and whenever there is exposure to chronic irritants what is the next thing that will happen there will be damage or injury and this injury will heal and healing happens with what students fibrosis. So, healing happens with what students fibrosis and then by the time it heals again there is re exposure to this what injury. So, do you know there is injury healing injury healing cycle and when it is multiplied by many times. So, whenever this happens in cycle there is a increased risk of what students dysplasia and this is what is making it very 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 interesting. So, chronic sub mucosal fibrosis this is really very 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 important thing. Now, what are these irritants you can have the exposure to you can say tobacco it can be exposure to alcohol it can be exposure to spicy food it could be exposure to pan masala even books like Sabastan's are right Sabastan is writing about pan masala. So, pan masala people have actually really become very famous even ill fitting dentures even ill fitting dentures can cause. So, if the dentures are not fitting properly so they can also result in this. So, these are some very important thing. Do you know what are the two classical signs of chronic submucosal fibrosis. So, whenever there is submucosal fibrosis the oral cavity will not open up and therefore, they are the one which are classically associated with two things. One is trismus inability to open the ca oral cavity. So, trismus lock jaw if you ask the patient to open the oral cavity and ask him to insert the fingers he might not be and because of this stiffening of the pterygoids. So, because of the stiffening of pterygoids this happens and the another thing that we get to see is enchyloglossia. So, these things are really very 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 important. Now, let us talk about the treatment. So, when we talk about the treatment of the oral cancers what are the treatments and how do we manage them. Let us understand the treatment of the pre malignant lesion and the treatment of the what cancers or the carcinoma. So, if it is a case of pre malignant lesion simply you go for wide local excision with 0.5 centimeter margin this is what is very 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 important. Sometimes you have some alternate also what is that radiotherapy you can go for laser ablation you can go for laser ablation also. So, these are certain things that we can or even topical or even you can put topical 5 fluorouracil or students sometimes imiq mod also imiq mod also for certain lesions. When we talk about the cancers this is what is very important why because here you will also require what you can say the resection with radiotherapy maybe chemotherapy. So, let us see. So, whenever we talk about the cancer yes we go for wide local excision with 1 to 2 centimeter margin this is what is the standard of care along with that the supra omohyoid neck dissection is mandatory. When we talk about supra omohyoid neck dissections you need to understand we are going to remove level 1, level 2, level 3 and do you know for the tongue for tongue we go for extended SOHND when we talk about extended SOHND it is level 1, 2, 3 and extending it to level 4 along with that plus minus you will go for radiotherapy and plus minus you will go for 
chemotherapy. Now, when we talk about the incidence or let us say when we talk about the indication for the radiotherapy, let us understand this. Let us understand the indication for radiotherapy. Now, what are the what is the regimen that we have? The classical regimen that we have is 60 grays over what weeks? Over 6 weeks and this is what is very 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 important. So, 60 grays over 6 weeks in the weekly dose point number 1. The second very important thing is what is the inclusion criteria? So, what is the inclusion criteria? This is really very 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 important. The first important thing in the inclusion criteria is the tumor should be so T3 and above as per the size criteria. So, as per the size more than 4 centimeter. Do you know depth of invasion more than equal to what students more than equal to 4 mm. This is again very 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 important. Do you know you can say N2 and above N2 and above. So, if it is N2 and above that is more than 3 centimeter lymph nodes you will have to go for. If the tumor free margin if the tumor free margin is found to be less than 1 centimeter then also and remember if it is a case of relapse. So, in all these cases you will go for external beam radiotherapy and this is what is really very 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 important. Now, when we are talking about the chemotherapy is it given for all? So, remember chemotherapy chemotherapy is indicated is indicated in two ways. What is that? As a part of NACT. So, NACT also you can give but indicated for T3 and above tumors. So, T3 and above tumors or 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 if N is found to be what positive. So, N positive that means N2 and above basically N2 and above N2 and above. Let us move forward and try to understand when we talk about the chemotherapy. So, 5 fluorouracil cisplatin cisplatin these are the standard you can say regimens four to six cycles is what we actually prefer for them. Now, what is the surgery that we do? So, this is again a very important interesting question. What is the surgery that do? So, for CA tongue, so if we talk about the cancer of the tongue, however, I will discuss their reconstruction in detail in the Dadagiri series one also. In I will discuss about each and everything, the incisions, what is the visor or lip split incision. So, CA tongue, we go for glossectomy. So, we go for glossectomy and when we talk about the reconstruction, how do you do the reconstruction? So, this is a tongue and therefore, we prefer to go for a free flap and remember tongue has a nerve sensation. So, we include the radial nerve and that is why radial forearm road, radial forearm free flap, radial forearm free flap and this is what is very, 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 very important. We also have ALT that is anterolateral thigh flap, but that is not that good. When we talk about the cancer of the lip, again you need to understand when we talk about the cancer of the lip. So, where in the lip will you get to see the cancers? Let us understand this. Do you know it is the lower lip which is the most common site than what students? Upper lip, point number one. In lower lip, it is the central of the lip more than the angles. So, in the lower lip SCC is the most common site and the central lip central part of the lip central lip is the most common site more than 90 percent of the cancers or 92 percent of the cancers occur in the central lip then in the upper lip and less than 2 percent occur in the corners basically we should not call it corner it should be commissural cancer. So, commissures so commissures are less than 2 percent and basically 7 percent around or 7 to 9 percent is somewhere around your upper lip cancers. So, in the lower lip it is the SCC when we talk about the upper lip upper lip it is the basal cell cancer and yes in the corners we have the SCC amongst them amongst the cancer of the lip which part is associated with worse prognosis. So, do you know they have a commissural cancers the angular cancers they have a highest risk. So, Commissural cancers, commissural cancers, they have the worst prognosis. This is what is very, very, very important. And I hope you know the management is wide local excision. So, whenever we go for post excision, excision, 
reconstruction post execution reconstruction what are the important things the most important thing is the defect that you have created and this is what is very 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 important so suppose this is the lip and suppose this is the defect that you have created so what is important how to repair it the gap is important now when we are talking about the gap if this gap is found to be less than one third always remember we will go for what primary primary closure primary closure if this gap is found to be more than one third up to two third what is the next thing that we all need to understand we have to go for flap reconstruction and what are the flaps that we have we have lip switch flap lip switch flap or this is also known as ab slender flap so we have ab slender ab slender or a lip switch flap do you know this is a flap based on sublabial and supralabial artery basically the slender part is for the corners and ab is for the center so this is on the sublabial and also on the supralabial so sublabial and the supra labial artery this is what is very 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 important apart from this we also have the webster's flap we also have the webster's flap so these are the flaps if the defect is less than two third if the defect is more than two third so what are the flaps that we have we have the bernard's flap we have the bernard's flap we have the gillies flap we have the gillies flap and the third is very 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 important that is a flap which is which can do a massive reconstruction that is cara pendzik flap so we have cara pendzik flap we have gillies flap and these flaps are very 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 important very important for you so i will try to show i will try to share the image uh, i'll try to share the image with you just give me a minute so let me take it from let me show it from some of the books only let me let me just let me just try to share it from a book so i can so i'll just share the, it from the book okay it's there in the oral cavity chapter oral cavity chapter so i just want to show you some classical flaps that we have this is this is how we do the this is the classical lip split mandibulotomy that we require for the mandible excision i'll share that also so let us understand this is the classical radial forearm free flap that you have the radial forearm free flap that we have this is how we can use the anterolateral thigh flap for the reconstruction this is anterolateral thigh flap and uh, let me also show you a classical one more reconstruction okay ab and slander also i'll try to show you okay, it's not it's not there i'll i'll sh i was i had i'll show you i'll add to your profile i'll add to this pdf also when we talk about the buccal cavity reconstruction this is again very 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 important so buccal cavity reconstruction is important buccal cavity is the most commonly involved cancer and we have a classical commandos procedure that we have combined approach to mandibular and oral cancers so after that there is a big defect so you cannot leave this cavity open here you will have to do some reconstruction and for that we have two types of you so reconstruction when we talk about we have two types of flaps we can use a pedicled we can use a free flap so pedicle is again a very 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 commonly used and we have the delto pectoral delto pectoral flap for reconstruction point number 1 or we can say the pmmc pectoralis major myocutaneous flaps students one more thing is you can use the forehead flap so forehead flap based on superior cervical artery so forehead flap can be used when we talk about the free flaps what are the free flaps you require a microvascular anastomosis to uh, you can say uh, reinstate or the vascularity so you cut it from the original pedicle and do a microvascular anastomosis with the recipient side you can say blood vessel so what are the free flaps we have we have radial forearm radial forearm arm free flap this is what is very 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 simple 
and we also have one more is ALT. What is ALT? Enterolateral thigh flap. Enterolateral thigh flap. So these are some important things that we all need to understand in this buccal cavity. Remember, if the mandible has to be reconstructed, so if mandible has to be excised and mandible reconstruction is required, you also need to add the bone. So we have osseomyocutaneous flaps basically. So when we talk about this osseomyocutaneous flap, uh, osseomyocutaneous flap, what is the bone material that is preferred? So what is the bone that we preferred students? It's very, very, very simple. We have fibula. So if you want edentulous teeth, fibula. If you want edentulous, we have the iliac crest chips, iliac crest chips, and we also have the sternal crest. So sternal or you can say the sternal chips. So this is how we do the reconstruction for the buccal cavity along with the mandible. So this was all for the today's you can say rapid fire discussion on the oral cavity. I hope you enjoyed and remember keep on learning with Sergi Dada. Do recommend Sergi Dada to your friends because your recommendation is going to grow this exclusive surgery community. So all the best for your days. So till then bye 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 bye.